The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, we now start another year, new year of our liturgical calendar, year B, with the first Sunday of Advent, a season reminding us of Christ's coming into our lives. As we can recall, arrival or coming into place is the meaning of the word Advent, which comes from the Latin Adventus. Actually, the word is not specifically Christian, but was used also in the non-Christian religions to signify the coming of the divinity into its temple, which was celebrated as a grand festival. And it is used by the Christian and given meaning. So the term Adventus is accepted and uh, is given meaning by the Christians. And it became the term to signify the season of the year in which we, we are waiting for the two comings of Christ. We have already heard that from our introduction. So Advent applied in the church is first a time of commemorating, recalling the first coming of Christ in the past, coming of Christ in the flesh, his incarnation. And also Advent is second, our celebration to long for the second coming of Christ. So in a sense, Advent can be considered as uh, our celebration of remembering, uh, making it present, that first coming of Christ in the past. Muna Christmas, no? first coming. So Advent precedes Christmas. Second, Advent is also our yearning, longing for the Lord. And our readings today invite us to reflect on our longing for Christ's second coming. We know that Christ will truly come because He will fulfill His promise. The only question here is, how do we long for Christ? Do our hearts really, or are our hearts really prepared for the coming of Christ? In what way do we long for Christ? And I believe that's a good reflection or a point for reflection for, the first, for this first Sunday of Advent. In the first reading, we heard about the appeal of the people of Israel saying, Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your, of your heritage, of that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. As it were, the chosen people were saying, Lord, please come in glory. Tear apart the heavens and come down. Si anang langit uniya alit na umarika. But at the same time, there was a fear, a sort of shame. They said, "Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful, and our guilt carries us away like the wind." It is tantamount of saying, "Lord, if you come, we hope you will not see our depravity, our immoralities." our limitations, our infidelities. However, such a shameful condition did not discourage Israel from asking the Lord to come. Instead, they turned to Him in prayer and supplication. 
Yes, they admitted their woundedness and their need for God by asking or by saying, Yet, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. Siguro nakakita na tag ka ng muhimog kolon, no? the potter. And then, we are all the work of your hands. In a sense, my brothers and sisters, the first reading invites us to always long for the Lord. And we should not get discouraged when we realize, when we are aware of our limitations, our weaknesses, our inadequacies. Our weaknesses should not prevent us from longing for the coming of the Lord. And always ask Him to fashion us like a potter molding the clay into that image that God wants us to be shaped. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not be discouraged by our frailties and defects. Instead, let us make these limitations our the matter for us to be humble enough to come to the Lord. Lord, kabalukas among kakulangan, ikay hulma namo. Come to us. Come to me. Come to my family. Come to our community, to our country. So, the first reading actually tells us that the longing for the Lord should be done with courage, but with humility and trust that the Lord will fashion us into His image. This is the first. Long with courage, long for the Lord with courage, with humility, and with trust on His power. In the second reading, St. Paul assures the Corinthians that as they are waiting for the Lord's coming, they are gifted with all kinds of gifts, like discourse, knowledge, all spiritual gifts that if recognized and utilized properly, could make them, in term, irreproachable or blameless or righteous on the day of the revelation of the Lord. So imagine, with these gifts, these are, shall we say, the things that you have to offer to the Lord. We have no more excuse. We cannot excuse ourselves, Lord, I cannot long for you because I have nothing to offer to you. Nah, -ah, the Lord has given us many gifts. The only thing is to be aware, to be sensitive of these gifts. And I believe, like the Corinthians, we also receive not only material blessings, but also spiritual gifts, especially the gift of faith. That is why, with this gift of faith, with all the gifts that we have, the challenge is, utilize as your way of expressing your longing for the Lord. So, Guru, the second point here is, our longing for the Lord is actually being sensitive to our gifts, utilizing the blessings that God has given to us, not only for our own benefit, but also for others' advantage. Karon kay Handicap Sunday, Siguro it's a good question. How do we, how do I use or utilize these blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon me for those who are less fortunate, for those who might be or who might be victims of calamities, those who are handicapped, those who are troubled. That could be one good expression of longing for the Lord. We long for Him by utilizing the gifts. He has given us. Our gospel also suggests another way of longing for the Lord. And namely, be awake, be watchful, do not sleep. Even if you are tempted to sleep during the homily, do not sleep when it is about the coming of the Lord. Stay awake, be watchful. Let us take a look, a look at the gospel. It mentions a parable about a master or a lord who leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. And as mentioned, the time of the master's return cannot be identified. He may come at dusk or sunset, at midnight, at dawn, or early in the morning. But what is important is not when will the Lord, when will the Master come? Does it matter when will He come? The important thing is, 
when he comes, will he find the servants and the gatekeeper awake? Nagmata ba ka? Basing nagtulog-tulog lang. And actually, accordingly, sleep is actually a picture of someone who is not interested in the Lord who will come. Gawas lang kung doon na kay problema sa tulog. So Jesus in the parable says, Be constantly on the watch. Stay awake. You do not know when the appointed time will come. Do not let him come suddenly and catch you sleeping. And the last line of our gospel indicates that Jesus' message for his disciples is also addressed to all of us. He says, What I say to you, I say to all, Be on guard. Watch. We can perhaps relate this expression of Jesus with our own experience of excitement when we long for somebody or for an event we consider uh, significant. Is it not true that because we are so excited for someone to arrive or for an event to happen, we don't want to go to bed, we don't want to go to sleep, right? So the excitement itself keeps us awake. Why? It's because our hearts are filled with the longing on the person or on the event that is to come. Ang bot ko nakatulog ba mo na kamoy mag-choir sa TV? Huwag nga mag-choir ni. Ako'y magbasa ang bot. Kung nakatulog ba mo. You stay awake. And this also applies to our waiting for the Lord's coming. We wait for the Lord. Why? Because we believe that He is not only significant, His coming will truly be realized. So therefore, faith is the root of our longing for the Lord. And our faith could sometimes fall asleep. We could be lukewarm, insensitive, and indifferent to the Lord. Perhaps we can cite some examples of uh, our faith falling asleep. Perhaps we are not any more bothered about Sunday observance. We are not troubled about missing mass during holidays of obligations. We are not worried anymore about observance of going to confession, penitential practices, and traditions. These realities are indicative that our faith gradually falls asleep. And the Lord who is there, the Lord who comes to our lives, is not anymore the subject of our excitement and our longing. That is why it's good to ask ourselves, what is happening to our faith in the Lord? Is it fully awake? Is it waiting for Him with excitement? Or is our faith really getting tired and sleepy? Pabasig, ato nag yung walang katulog, namatay na yun ang pagtuo. Siguro we can ask some questions. What are the things that can put our faith to sleep? Accordingly, one possible reason is distraction. We know that faith in Christ means seeing all the events of our lives in the perspective of Christ, in the perspective of Christ's teaching. Faith is focusing on the Lord. With distractions, we are defocused. We stop focusing ourselves on the Lord, but we focus ourselves on the things. And when we are focused on these things, our faith becomes already secondary. Siguro ni lang secondary for others. Siguro naragyot sa kinailaluman in the ladder of in the in the in the rank of the ladder of our priorities. That could be one reason why our faith falls into slumber. A lot of distractions. So are we still focused in the Lord? Or has somebody else or has something else taken the Lord's place as the center of our lives and our longing? The second possible reason is the transmission of our faith. Especially the type of faith that we transmit to the younger generations. Siguro daw kani to, Sundays can be time for Worship, going to the church with the families. Karun, on Sundays, for some, hopefully not for many, 
going to the church is only an afterthought. Siguro we have a list of what to do on Sundays, but they are not about Jesus. They are not about our faith. We are preoccupied with things, though not bad in themselves, but do not necessarily nurture our faith. We might be enjoying with these good things, but in the process, our faith sleeps. And we transmit to the next generation that type of faith that is not excited for the Lord, that does not look forward to the Lord, that does not look forward to Sundays, to serving others. And consequently, we transmit to the next generation that kind of faith that is not excited anymore to welcome the coming of the Lord. You know, this is our challenge. If we are defocused, Sige daw, Advent, go back to, the, to your focus. Christ should be the center of this celebration. Okay naman itong night party, exchanging gifts, Christmas bonus. Pero masig kanila itong ma-focus, and the Lord is now put in the periphery. Focus on Christ. Second, transmit the faith, but that faith which is excited always for the coming of the Lord. During the Eucharist, we do not only recall the first coming of Christ in the past. We do not only long for Christ's coming in the future, we actually experience Christ in the here and now, in signs and symbols, in the liturgical celebration, in this Mass. Christ comes to us. Are we excited? Hopefully, yes. And that's the faith that we need to transmit to others. The excitement that the Lord comes to us. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, as we celebrate Advent, may we continue to long for the Lord with courage, with humility, with generosity of our gifts, and with that being awake, with excitement, and not to fall asleep. Amen.